Amen. Amen. We have been dealing with a series of sons and daughters who make the Father's vision possible. Mm. Amen. But I think along the way, God hijacked us and diverted our, detoured us to another direction. And this is something that God spoke pertinently about in my spirit. And he says, if you want to build a good vision, how do you want to build a good vision without building the sons and daughters first? Mm. And you want to have results of a good church, but you don't want to have work done in the hearts of the people first. But it's been something that has been so heavy in my spirit. And sometimes we, we, we come to church and we are, so, we are so spiritual that we miss a depressed brother next to me. We come to church and we are so, we're so epic, we're so, we're so jacked up, you know, we're so, we're so up in the air that we miss the things that are happening on the surface. And sometimes we, 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 we create an environment that forces everyone that walks in through the door to start smiling even if they don't feel like it. You know why? Because they are too scared to expose themselves in the church. They're too scared to, to be vulnerable in the church. Yet it's the, it's the same place where when we come, and, and I'll give a, a, very, a very interesting example that when you go to the doctor, you don't care whether he's male or female. Yes. Eh? Yeah. If the doctor says, take off your pants and show whatever you are showing, you do that. Right? Because, because listen, because the environment allows you to be vulnerable. Come on, somebody. It is, it is because the environment allows you to be vulnerable. You're not asking what is your credentials, whatever. No, because you want healing, you are allowing yourself to be vulnerable enough to access healing. Amen. 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 And may the church become a place, a haven, that somebody can be able to bear themselves open and say, this is what is happening to me. Amen. Amen. May the church become that kind of a place. Yeah. I want us to open our Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter number, John chapter number 8. John chapter 8. Amen. Amen. John chapter 8. I want us to open John chapter number 8. And we're going to read from verse, in fact, let's open chapter 7 first, verse number 53, which is the last verse of chapter number 7. Chapter 7, first, verse number 53. And I want us all to follow as we read in the New King James Version. And everyone went to his own house. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now early in the morning he came again into the temple and all the people came to him. And he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses, in the law, commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. So when they, when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one beginning with the oldest even to the last and Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst when Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman he said to her woman where are those accusers of yours has no one condemned you she said no one Lord and Jesus said to her neither do I condemn you go and sin no more verse number 12 then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but I have the light of life. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. 
Amen and amen. amen. I want to share with you this morning on a very simple but yet effective subject that says build or kill. Build or kill. I want you to say to your neighbor, build or kill. Build or kill. Come on, I know you don't like them, but speak to them. Build or kill. Build or kill. Wherever the word or sits in between two words, it therefore means you are being given options. Are we together? Yes. It therefore means you have got an option of whether to build or to kill. In other words, where there's options, there's a choice that must be made. There are things in this life we cannot choose, but there are things we can choose. Amen? Amen. There are things in this life we cannot choose, and there are things we can choose. One of the things we cannot choose is to be born with people. I was born with a crazy twin sister, so I have accepted my case. Yeah, well. I've accepted my case. The madness is, is a lot. I have to fast and pray to be delivered from it. We can't choose that. We can't choose that. And so many times we spend time trying to change what we cannot choose. We spend so much effort trying to change what we cannot choose. Mm -hmm. But you see, if you cannot choose it, it therefore means somebody made the choice on your behalf. Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Build or kill. kill. Verse number 53 of chapter, chapter number 7. I noticed that chapter 8 started somewhere in the middle. So I had to go back to verse number 53. And watch how the Bible begins by the Bible begins by saying, and everyone went to his own house. Now, when I read the passage of scripture or that part of scripture, if everyone went to his own house, what happened to those that did not have a house? Did somebody consider where they went? Huh? What happened to those that did not have a house? The second thing I realized is if everyone went to his own house, it therefore means they were concerned about the affairs in their house. Are we together? Amen. They were concerned about what, what is the state of their house? What is happening in their house? So everyone went to deal with their own business. Eh? So if we were to put it in today's language, we would say everyone left and minded their business. Some of us might remember the show, Mind Your Language. <laughs> Minded their own business. Yeah. So every single person went their own way to their own house and started dealing with their own things. Verse number one of chapter number eight. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. I want us to see something. What was the Mount of Olives? The Mount of Olives was the place where Jesus prayed. Yeah? So when everybody was going to their own house, Jesus went into prayer. I wanted to take note of that. When everybody was going to their own house, Jesus went on his knees to pray. And the Bible says to us, verse number two. Now early in the morning he came again into the temple and all the people came to him and he sat down and taught them. If he came early in the morning, it therefore means that most likely he went to the Mount of Olives the previous night. Mm -hmm. eh? yeah. it, was not, it was not a one day thing. So he did an all night prayer. When he was done with an all night prayer, he came to the temple in the morning. Yeah. And when he came to the temple and all the people came to him and he sat down and taught them. This is the gist of where I'm coming now. Verse number three. The Bible says, then, he, then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught. The scribes and the Pharisees brought to him a woman caught. Do you remember that everyone went to his own house? Right. Everyone 
went to his own house. Remember the woman has been caught, right? Yeah. So you, you, you need to do some catching. <laughs> Everyone went to his own house. If everyone went to his own house, Pharisees and said, you sees, where did you find the woman? <laughs> Remember, everyone went to his own house. But Pharisees, could it be that the woman was at your house? <laughs> if everyone went to their own Where did you find the woman? They brought to him a woman. You guys can go, can, can go on stage so that everybody can see you. They brought to him a woman caught in adultery. Now, I want you to see something. The woman was caught in adultery. Are we together? You can never catch what you are not looking for. Uh -huh. What you catch is what you are looking for. <laughs> you cannot catch what you are not looking for. While Jesus was praying, the Pharisees, the priests of the church, the members of the worship team, the members of the church were busy looking for a woman in the night. I want to ask, when others are praying, what are you doing? <laughs> when others are in prayer, when others are even all night, you guys are not serious about this woman, you have caught her. <laughs> Some people's children. Listen, as, they, as Jesus was in the Mount of Olives praying, the church was busy looking for a woman. Uh -huh. Are we together? Yeah. The church was busy looking for a woman. Let me settle there for a second. While others are doing the things they ought to do, others are looking for the things they don't need to look for. Imagine if the Pharisees had gone to Jesus, rather had gone with Jesus to prayer. <clears throat> what difference would be made in their lives? Yeah. Yeah. If they if said, we hear your prayer for all night, we are coming with you. Mm -hmm. I said, the Bible says that. And when they had set her in, in the midst, verse number four, they said to him, teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. <laughs> she was not caught when she was done. No. In the very, in the very yeah. act. Yeah. Who was there when she was in the act? <laughs> if we caught her in the act, yeah. who was there when she was in the act? Yeah. I will not go further and ask, who is she acting with? <laughs> Remember the subject is build or kill. Yeah. We'll get there just now. Who was she with in the act? If she was caught in the act. She was caught in the very act. Listen, the Bible says that. Verse number five. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. If they knew the law when they caught her, it therefore means they came ready to stone. Hear me well. So many people in the church, when they want to repent, they cannot repent because you've got stones in your hands. You are ready to stone. They, they cannot come and be vulnerable in the church and say, I have sinned. This is what has happened to me. This is where I have fallen. Because they know that the killer, the biggest killer is in the church. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. 
and they are busy talking to each other. I know who the ringleader is. I'm very sure. <laughs> Such should be stoned. Right? Now, you cannot talk about stoning if you don't have a stone. Yeah. Right? Mm. You were ready. Yeah. You were ready to do what? To stone. To stone. Some people turned back from the doors of the church because the moment they walked in, they saw the stones in your hands. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Waiting. Waiting. And some of you were even aiming. <laughs> Waiting that if a sinner walks in here, we will show them. We are, we are too holy. Yeah. We, are, we are not of that level. Us. We don't associate with your, with your kind. <laughs> oh, Jesus ate with Zacchaeus. Who was a fraudulent tax collector when now you don't associate with the kind? And listen, he says, such should be stoned. But what do you say? Right? Listen, what do you say? Jesus, we want to tell you what has been happening for years. Before your time, Stoning was the verdict. Okay. And when I was sitting at home last night, yesterday the subject was stop the cycle. This morning God said, no, no, change. I want you to talk about this. But let me let me stick to stop the cycle a bit. <coughs> a cycle is something that you repeat. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> right? Mm. It never stops. It comes back, it goes, it comes back, it goes, it comes back, it goes. So for years. There are many women that died because of stones. So therefore we want to continue the cycle and say that let judgment come out through the stone. But listen, the Bible says in the book of First Peter, the stone that the builders rejected has now become the chief corner stone. When they were bringing her to be stoned, they did not know they were bringing her to a stone. To this stone, but not a stoning stone. And we'll chat about it just now. But what do you say? Verse number six. He says, I'm there with you guys just now. This they said, testing him. That he might not have some that, that, that they, they might they, they might have something to of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down on the ground. With his finger, as though he did not hear them. Stood down with his finger, as though he did not hear them. And the Lord said to me, The problem is the church hears everything <laughs> and wants to respond to everything. Somebody comes to you and says, You know that member of your church? I know them very well. I know that. Yo, you do not know. You do not know. <laughs> How, how can you walk with such a, how can you be with such a person as a member of your church? I know, ask me, I know them. And you, you don't stoop down. You, what, 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 tell me, tell me. Sometimes you must stoop down like you did not hear. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Listen to me so well. Sometimes you must stoop down like you did not hear. The problem is you want, you, you give attention where attention is not supposed to be given. Had you not given that attention, a sister might be saved today. Yeah. Amen. Somebody came to me the other day and they said to me, I saw so and so in pictures in your church. I said, bless the Lord. <laughs> and they said to me, do you really know that person? I said, do I need to know them? I, I knew the person. I just said, do I need to know them? I said, let me tell you. I said, thank you. I don't need to know. I'm okay. I'm fine. With what I know, I'm fine. The problem is when people are in church, when you go out of church digging things that do not connect to the church. Yeah. Are you really saved? Where you work? Hey, 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 hey. Too much investigate, investigative journalism will get will land you on carte blanche. Yeah. <laughs> you are applying for a job. 
And you see, some people are not. You, have you ever seen somebody who cannot worship just because someone else walked into the room? You. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Listen, they can't worship God, right? Mm. Because another human being walked into the room. Sure. Have you ever been into a space where you are disturbed by somebody who is not involved in your relationship with God? Mm. <laughs> we worship you. Wow. <laughs> who are you? What do you want here? Because you know too much. Yeah. The problem is you know too much. Yeah. When you know little, you are fine. Yeah. And they said she was caught in the very act. And I wanted to watch something. They brought her before him. Right? Put her on the ground. Right? We are ready with our stones. Right? To stone her. I can't go practical with this one, guys. <laughs> I would try, but I can't. <laughs> now, I want you to imagine that when they told him, before he went down, their stones were read to exercise the law. Right? Now, he went down and he wrote. When he finished writing, he said, or rather, when he finished his first part, he said, let he without sin be the first to cast the stone. I want to, wait, 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 wait. wait, wait, wait. <laughs> let him without sin be the first to cast the stone. Let's talk about this for a second. How many stones have you cast without looking at yourself first? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? No without checking that you are actually not fit to throw a stone. Mm -hmm. oh, let's, uh, let's, let's make it real. Where now, where now you are the one that is talking about the person that just walked into the room. But if we were to dig deep and check you out, we would realize that there's a lot of mess underneath that makeup. Yeah. There's a lot of mess underneath that suit, eh? He says, let him without sin be the first to cast the stone. Yeah. Did you see something? I need Jesus. I need Jesus. Mr. Cox, you are Jesus only for now. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes down and he continues writing. Right, just write, just write on the side. He goes down and he continues writing. They are going now. Because they've realized that I have too much sin to be the one to cast a stone. I have too much sin to be the one to cast a stone. Now listen, as they are going, as they are on their way, going, all of them put their stones down. They put their stones down and they said, <laughs> and they left. Yeah, they left. Right. Now listen, the Bible says that as they had left, Jesus is still on the ground, right? Right? The woman is now standing. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. The woman is now standing. Jesus is on the ground. The Bible says, verse number 8, he says, and again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. He continued writing, verse number 9. <coughs> then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went away one by one, beginning with the oldest, <laughs> even to the last. <laughs> now listen, the whole church was here to kill a woman. <coughs> the whole church was here to do what? To kill a woman. How many times do we gather for death? Oh God. I want you to hear me so well. How many times do we gather for burial than do we gather for resurrection? The whole church was there. From the oldest to the last. They were gathering to do what? To kill. And left the woman. And Jesus was left alone. And the woman standing in the midst. Jesus stands up. 
He was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? So just, just wait, Jesus. I'll be with you just now. Listen. It was the same stones that we had in our hands. And the aim was to kill the woman. Are we together? Right? The aim was to kill the woman. Right? But listen. The same stones, the same hands that wanted to kill the woman can be the same hands that can build a platform for her to be able to stand upon Amen. and be able to be better than what she was. Amen. The problem is we're using the bricks to kill, but we're not using the bricks to build. Yeah. There is an issue here that there are too many dead bodies in the church. Why? Because we use the same tongues that we were supposed to use to build to kill. We use the same money that we were supposed to use to raise somebody up to pull them down. It was the same weapon that was supposed to kill him. Mm -hmm. If it was used right, mm -hmm. it would not kill him. Yeah. It would build her. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And I ask a question. Are you building or are you killing? Mm -hmm. Remember, it is the same mouth that you can use to pray for someone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but with the same mouth, you are gossiping about someone. Yeah. Are you building or are you killing? Yeah. Sure. It is the same hands that you can use to hug somebody, but with the same hands you are hitting somebody down. Are you building or are you killing? <laughs> and it's amazing that, and let me chat about this for a second. It's amazing that when they brought the woman who was caught in the act, where was the man? Did they catch the woman acting alone? <laughs> they must have caught a man in the mix. Mm. Yeah. But where was the man? Mm. How many times do we shift the blame on one party? Mm. Huh? Oh. I'm not beating on the surface right now. How many times do we say it was the woman's fault? And we bring stones to stone one side. Meanwhile, it was two that were involved. I wanted to watch something. Bible says that. He said, she said, no one, the accusers are no longer there. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Listen. If The woman was stoned to death. Who would Jesus have to talk to? Huh? No one. At the end of the day, there would be no one for Jesus to do what? To talk to. Because what he could have saved is already dead. Yeah. Or who you could save you could have saved is already dead. Talk a bit. I'm there. Let just now. Don't, don't get tired. Listen. Where we should have spoken, we started by stoning. And when we want to speak, death has already happened. And I said during the week when we we're doing prayer and fasting, I said. Imagine if the disciples knew that Judas betrayed Jesus. Right? They knew it, isn't it? Yeah. Huh? They knew that Judas sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Right? Imagine if the disciples had gone to Judas' house to conduct prayer. After he had betrayed Jesus, would he have committed suicide? No. Most likely not. Right? 
And how many people are committing suicide because the church has stepped back? Mm. We've washed our hands clean and said that ah, that one it's a it's, it's a no-go area. We have we are telling you we have tied everything we can away. There's nothing that will happen. We have tied everything we can. But have you tied everyone you can? When Elijah went into the wilderness eh, to cry and to say, Lord, take my life. One of the things he says to the Lord is that I am left alone. There is no one else. Right? And amazingly, God says to him, there is 7,000 prophets I've hidden. 7,000. I've hidden them. You are not alone. Right? But now, could it be, and I think it's not, but could it be possible that the prophets did not know that Elijah had killed 450 prophets of Baal? This guy was a national hero. There was no way they could not have heard about it. But even after hearing about it, they still kept their distance from him. And so many people are, ki are, are killing themselves, are dying, because the church has said, we are not attending to you. <clears throat> when are you in a possible case? There's nothing we can do about you. Which Jesus says, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Verse number 12. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Let's talk about this. If Jesus says, I am the light of the world, and then he says, he who follows me or she who follows me, whoever follows me, right? Right? <coughs> now, that word follow simply means he's ahead. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And whoever is following is what? He's behind. He's behind. And God said to me, when he says whoever follows me, he's saying that I, Jesus, have got the responsibility to be followable. Mm. It is my responsibility to be followable. And some of the people have not joined Christianity all because of the stone you threw. We are not followable because of what you said one day. Because of how you mistreated someone one day. And they said, no, never Christianity. I'm okay. I'll pass. I'll be okay. <clears throat> he says, I am the light. Now, he says, if he says, I am the light, could it be that he's actually trying to say that those that follow are coming from darkness? Mm. Eh? Mm. Because you don't follow light if there's no darkness. Yeah. Right? So it's, it becomes very critical. Now listen, it becomes very critical for you to understand that if you are the light, it does not make sense for you to spend time in darkness. So in light. Excuse me for that. It does not make time, it does not make sense for you to spend time in, in light. Because if we switch on another light here, there's no difference. But if you find yourself in darkness and you are not on, then there's a problem. There's a problem. And the challenge is we find so many Christians in darkness, but they're switched off. We are switched off. Instead of getting rid of the darkness, we are actually amplifying the darkness. I want you to see something. Acts 14, verse 22. 14, 22. You can either choose to build or to kill. Let's start from verse number 19. Then Jews from Antioch and Iconium came there, and having persuaded the multitude, they stoned Paul, dragged him out of the city, supporting, supposing him to be dead. Verse number 20. Then the Bible says, however, when the disciples gathered around him, he rose up and went into the city. Now listen. 
when Paul goes up, right? When Paul goes up, it was not because there was a crowd around him. It was because the disciples gathered around him. Now listen. Instead of gathering when somebody is stoned, we step away. <coughs> Our gathering can be the meaning of death or the meaning of resurrection. Listen, the disciples only gathered around him. Right? The amount of gathering they did around him, listen, made Paul so strong that he went back to the same city where he was stoned. And I said, Lord, what does this mean? He said, when you have covered them so well, you have covered them so well that they are not afraid to go back in the same place because they are strong enough. Yeah. Paul has left me. I will find another Paul. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you have covered them so well that they are strong enough to go back from this to the same place where they have been hurt. Okay, let me practicalize this. You have prayed so hard for them that they are strong enough to go back even in the household where things are not well. Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe let's maybe you're not getting that one. You have prayed for them, you have held them up for so for so long and so well that they are able to still wake up and go to the boss that is messing around with them. You 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 have kept them, you have stood around them, you have surrounded them so well that when they don't feel like preaching, they wake up and they preach in the morning because there's a surrounding around them. How many times do we expose our own? Instead of surround. A pastor that I know went through a bad time, a turmoil, a, turmoil, a very, very, very bad time. And somebody sent me a text. And they said to me, You are very vocal. Your voice is heard. Whenever you post something, people will, will read it and follow it and whatever not. Why are you not saying something about this person? I said to them, my duty is not to expose the person. Mm. My duty is to find out to restore the person. Amen. I picked up the phone. I called. And I said, if you need somebody to chat to, I'm here. And I hung up the phone. Instead of calling the person we are to restore, we call the people we are to talk about with. Did you see what she was dressed with? Ah, did you see how he looked? You can, in fact, when I sat next to him, I could feel it. That last night it was bad. <laughs> Imagine the effect and the impact of the, of, of, listen, listen, of the hug when the person knows their state. They know that they're stinking, but you went like there's nothing. Oh, brother, I love you so much. I appreciate you, man. How are you? Are you well? Do you, do you realize that you are saving a soul more than creating news on the paper? Amen. And so many times we want to be the first to report the new the, the news did you hear mm. we don't want to be the first to pray imagine when they had caught him i told you i'll get someone else but it's fine imagine when they had caught him and they did not bring him bring her to jesus but they said we want to pray with you sister we want to restore you back to God. We want to, we want to help you find your way back to Jesus. And the problem is, you want to broadcast what you should do privately. What you should be doing privately and kneeling down in your own corner and in your space and pray for someone and talk to them and counsel them through where now you want to be famous that you are the first one who found out what they did.
And I want you to take a counter up as we wrap up now in the morning. I want you to take up a counter that when somebody comes to you and tells you what a fellow Christian did, the first question is not, oh, is it really true? I didn't know it was true. The first question is, what did you do about it? The person who's telling you, ask them, what have you done about it? And you know, Christians, Christians are special. And I've got a better word, but I'll, I'll stick to special. <laughs> Christians are special. They are very special people. Because they applaud when it's convenient. When it's convenient, they walk with you everywhere. Ah. They want to be associated. I am so and so. I am under so and so. Yeah. My pastor is so. But let the pastor make a mistake. Ah. Jesus! Who are you talking about? I don't know them. <laughs> don't even put my name with that name. Never! You must never! <laughs> We, we, are, we are very special people. We are extremely special. Because you know why, what, what makes us special? It's because within the church, everybody must be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Every single one of us must be perfect. You cannot make, you cannot, you are a Christian, you cannot, you cannot, you must never make a mistake. But Jesus, when he speaks, he says, I have come to the lost. Yeah. Amen. Huh? Mm. And notice what the psalmist says. He says, a righteous man might fall. Mm. Oh, not a thousand. Ah, Jesus. Jesus help us. <laughs> Seven <laughs> times. <laughs> People that don't attend Bible study might fall. <laughs> a righteous man might fall. Seven times. Who's falling? A righteous man. We miss that, eh? Yeah. We miss it. It's not just it's not a sinner that is falling. It is a righteous man who is falling. Amen. Huh? But you know when he falls, we are nowhere to be found. Say never, you know, never, never. Eh? That, that person is not a member of our church. I can tell you now, the pastor announced it in public that he's not a man. We have revoked his membership. <laughs> Let me ask the last question. Sometimes when we get rid of people, right? When we get rid of people in our churches and we say we don't want to be associated with this person, Sometimes we, we, we say it is for their own good. We want them to find a place to be restored. They must stop being active in the church so that they can be restored. Ne? But that is nonsense. We're just protecting our image in the eyes of the people. We want to be associated only and say our image is well in the eyes of the people. And let me ask you a question. If it is well in the eyes of the people, is it well in the eyes of God? And God just wants you to turn away. To turn away. And forget the things that have been done and go for the soul. This is the challenge this week. There's somebody you have never checked on. Yeah. Just to see why they are not at church. Mm. Okay, let me not talk about somebody. Your own brother, your blood brother. Mm. Things are not going well. You have never picked up the phone for the last two years. Yeah. Yet you call yourself a Christian. Mm. Okay, let, let me not go there. Your own mother-in-law you do not talk to. In fact, when you go home, you go to your maternal home because me and my mother-in-law don't see eye to eye and you're a Christian. 
okay, maybe that's too far. Let me, let's bring it a bit home. Your own son you do not call. When we are lifted, we forget to lift. We need to go and pray now. When we are lifted, we forget to lift. You know when you are high and mighty? When you are up, right? And somebody who's down comes, right? Somebody who's down comes, we become untouchable. No, I'm, 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 you know, I, I've worked so hard to come to where I am right now. I'm not going to let a sinner mess it up for me. I'm too respected. I'm not going to let somebody mess it up for me. For hey, hey, stay away from me. I cannot associate with you. When the lifted forget to lift, death continues to happen around them. But imagine when you say, let me try and get you up. Mm. Let me try. To, you, might, you, might, you might not be there, but I'm going to hold on with you. Mm. Hold on. Mm. Are you building or are you killing? Mm. Are you building or are you killing? Let's bow our heads. Building. Oh, I'm kidding. In fact, there's somebody who told them they can't come to church because they're not yet ready. You told them, you said to them, you can't come to church, you're not yet ready. You said, no, 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 no. We, we need to, we need you, you need to be ready first. Work on yourself before you come. Can't you, they are supposed to be worked on by God right here in the church. us to go and pray. The Lord will remind you of someone that you have tossed aside. You have seemed to have forgotten. You have seemed to put aside and said you are no longer important. I'm not even going to chase after you. You are impossible. But God wants that very person. Let's begin to pray. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that Lord, you will help us, mighty God. Individually, in the heart, in the mind, you are refreshing right now. That there's someone that we failed to follow up on. There's someone we failed to go back and say, yes, the church is ready for you. Come as you are. We will see what God will do in your life. Father, I pray that, Lord, you will help us, mighty God, that our hearts are not drawn Oh Lord, Father, or captured by the things on the outside, by the things that stay on the outside, that we fail to understand, that we fail to bear witness, that we fail to go and pull and get ourselves dirty just for the sake of one. And Lord, help us, mighty God, in the name of Jesus Christ, that Father, we go back and we draw that one, that same one, that Lord, we have, oh God, Father, given upon. We go back and we say, it is time for the Lord to do something in your life. And Lord, instead of killing me, we build. Instead of killing me, we build. In the name of Jesus, Lord, help us that, Father, we become a church that embraces even those that we thought would never come. In the mighty gracious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I want you to see this. In the next three or four weeks, do you remember that boy or that man that promised you marriage? Huh? And he left you the day he was supposed to pay Lobola, he did not appear. He did not come. That day. From that day, for the last three, four years, you have never spoken to him. Right? He's going to be walking to the church the next four weeks. <laughs> He's going to be coming to church. When he comes, will he find a killer or a builder?
Remember the boss that made life difficult for you? Yeah. Until you resign. <laughs> Until you resign, you had in your resignation. It was not because you did not love the job. You left the job, but life was difficult. He's going to receive Christ in the church. In the next two weeks, will you become a builder or a killer? When somebody has just received Christ, you're like, you, ah, that one is not genuine. I'm telling you, Pastor. I need a meeting with you. You create a meeting with the pastor just to talk about someone. <laughs> and when people come to church, may they find an environment that is building. Amen. 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 That environment will not just happen all by itself. We are that environment. Amen. It is us Amen. that is responsible for that.